So maybe you want to get into laser cutting and engraving. We are going to get into a bunch of different types of lasers and talk about what might be the best for your situation. What is up guys, I'm Brandon. Welcome back to the shop. This week we're gonna get into all things lasers. So if you've seen my other videos, you know that I've done quite a few laser projects as well as quite a few laser reviews. You can check those out up there. So in this video, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown on what lasers are out there, especially if you are more on the maker, hobbyist side of things, and you're looking to add one of these to your shop. So we've got lasers that range from this guy, which is a couple hundred bucks and it's a diode laser, all the way to larger, CO2 lasers that are actually an import from China to the higher end hobbyist market. This is a full spectrum Muse, but there are a bunch of different ones out there. Now these are just the lasers I have in my shop, but we're gonna get into all the ones that I have been able to find online. So I've done an entire roundup post on all of these guys, which breaks it down by all the different details, the sizes, the powers, the costs below. But let's get into what are the best lasers in 2020. So let's start off with my top Picks. And we're gonna start at the lowest end of the spectrum. And really when you're looking at buying a machine, you really wanna look at what you actually want to do. There are three different types of lasers, at least the ones that I cover in this review. And at the lower end is a diode laser. This is actually from Ortur. This is a kind of a Chinese import, but it does a pretty good job. But most of these diode lasers are gonna have something like this. This is the actual laser module. They are typically between two and five watts. I've done a review on this one, which is like 175 US, uh, as well as its larger one, which is about 200 bucks. And really the larger one, the Ortur version two, is my top pick if you wanna get in just kinda on the base level. You really just want to check it out, see what you can do, because it's got a really big work area, um, and it does a pretty good job for laser engraving. And that really is the key. Those diode lasers, especially the ones that come on the lower end scale, you're not gonna be able to do much laser cutting. Um, you'll be able to do like paper, maybe some cardboard, maybe, maybe super thin wood, like veneers if you do multiple passes. But these are great for engraving. I've done some really cool kind of full picture, raster picture illustrations using those as well as doing marks. So maybe you're looking to put just logos onto cutting boards or engrave people's names. These little guys are a really good way to get started. All right, so we're actually going to step up a good bit to my next recommendation. This is my budget-minded CO2 laser. So that's actually mine, which is this blue guy sitting behind me. I spent my own money on this guy, and this was after a ton of research. And you might be wondering what's the difference between diode and CO2. We won't get deep into the actual science and the physics of how it works. I included that in the article down below, but the big thing is they're way more powerful. Uh, but they also, they have a big, massive laser tube in the back, and because of that, uh, they're a lot bigger, but they also are more fragile because there's a big piece of glass. Um, but you jump up from like four or five watts to in this case, 50-ish watts. Once you get to that range, what that means is you can actually start to cut through wood. Probably my favorite thing to cut is about quarter inch plywood. I do tons of things with quarter inch plywood. I do signs, I do boxes. So I did a full build video on this on a desktop organizer. You guys can check out up there. But what's great is I'm using full quarter inch plywood as well as I've used quarter inch acrylic. So not only are you going to be able to do all of the nice engraving, you're also going to be able to get into cutting. So really the biggest drawback with these is the fact that it is an import from China. And that's not a knock on Chinese quality. It's really a knock on the fact that um, all the documentation and the software um, just isn't in English, and honestly, it isn't the nicest. So uh, what I actually do is I run a different piece of software for this guy that what came with it is called Lightburn. And Lightburn is absolutely amazing. If you've seen any of my other videos that where I talk about lasers, you know that is the software that I use. You can use it on the CO2 lasers as well as the diode lasers, but you might have some things out of the box that come out a little bit weird from shipping. I know some friends who've had their glass tube was actually broken um, and some other kinks that you can work out. But especially if you go through eBay, you're gonna be able to get all that stuff returned and fixed uh, without having to pay for anything extra. So I'd strongly recommend going that route. So really stepping up to the highest end of lasers that you might be considering are what I'm gonna call uh, Kickstarter lasers. And that is because if you have ever looked at a laser before, more than likely after that, you've actually seen an ad for Glowforge, the 3D laser printer. 
and Glowforge is probably the most popular you guys have seen come out. So Glowforge has three different versions and I have picked kind of their most basic version. That's kind of my runner up for these higher end Kickstarter desktop lasers. And what's great about these in general is they're gonna have cameras, the software is gonna be way nicer, and usually the build quality is gonna be nicer. The Glowforge is great. I have some friends that have it. It is really, really, really easy to use. And you can actually tell in their marketing, their target isn't just for makers or woodworkers, but really kind of stepping into the crafting DIY space. And because of that, uh, the features are super accessible, and that's why I picked it as kind of the runner up. And the biggest drawback that I've seen with Glowforge is really the fact that the, uh, the software has to be accessed wirelessly. You can't connect a computer up, maybe you're in a garage like I am and the Wi-Fi isn't as great. Uh, and then also because of that, the price is a good bit higher. You are going from something that is like 1500 and going up at least $1,000 to get a machine that has a smaller work area and a less powerful laser, but you're getting the massive ease of use with it that is a big plus. So my top pick is actually going to be a version of one that I have behind me, and that is the Muse line from Full Spectrum. Uh, they actually sent me this unit. They have three different versions. They have the Core, the 2D, and the 3D. This is the 3D version behind me, kind of their top end one. So I might be a little bit biased, but really when you look at the specs, it kind of makes sense on why this one is really, really nice. So really the differences between those three are the camera systems. Uh, the Core has no camera whatsoever, um, but it has all of the really nice features that we'll get into here in a second. Uh, and then the 2D has a 2D camera, which again is this one behind me, has a camera that can go up and down with the material. It can actually sense how thick something is. But core is kind of what you compare with the Glowforge. The only drawback is at the core, you don't have that internal camera, but their software actually like a good bit more and it's not just web-based. You can access it from the web. I've been inside before and started a laser cut and then actually out and make sure nothing was catching on fire. But their software is called Retina Engrave and it does a really nice job. So it is browser based, but what's nice is you can access it offline. So you can actually connect directly into it, then put in the IP address into a web browser and you can go basically directly into this controller. The overall build quality on these are really nice. They're all metal. They have a really nice warranty. And another cool feature about these is you can actually remove the bottom. So maybe you do have a massive piece that you want to engrave and it just is not going to fit. You can actually take the whole machine and put it directly on top of the piece that you're working with, which is awesome. And then again, when you step it up to adding the camera systems, you get all of those great features as well. Another thing with CO2 lasers is not only are you going to have the laser, but you're also going to have an air compressor, which helps basically put out the fire when the laser is cutting on most materials, as well as a water chiller. And that's going to be a pump and then a vat of water that's going to cycle through the actual glass tube where the laser goes. For my Chinese one down here that literally is an aquarium pump, a compressor that's super loud, and then I have this little plastic thing that I put all of it inside of. On the full spectrum side, what's great is all of that is inside of one single unit, and that's actually controlled by the laser. So it'll turn the compressor on when it needs it, it'll run the water when it needs it, and all of that being integrated is another cool bonus once you get up to that higher level. So let's do a quick overview of some of the other lasers that are out there. So probably the most popular one for uh, the maker hacker community is something people like to call the K40. There's actually a bunch of different versions of these. It basically just means it's a Chinese import that's 40 watts. Orion is probably the one I see the most. Uh, these are good, but if you get it, no, you're gonna have to do a lot to it more than likely and things are gonna break. On the good side, you're gonna actually learn how the laser works. You're probably gonna have to replace parts. You're gonna have to add parts. And they're usually less than 400 bucks. So basically doubling the price of a much less powerful diode laser, um, you're gonna step way up to a 40 watt, but you're going to lose safety features. Uh, you're going to lose a lot of reliability. You're gonna have to tinker a good bit with this thing to get it to work. So there are a lot of other videos online where people have the K40. They kind of walk through what they did to it. So I encourage you guys to check that out before you actually decide to pick one up. Another really popular one that I've been seeing over the last year is actually from Dremel. It's called the Digilab LC. 
40. And you guys can see that it actually looks really, really similar to the Full Spectrum Muse. And that's actually because uh, Dremel has partnered with Full Spectrum to put this thing out. It's a little bit more expensive than the Full Spectrum version uh, because you've got the Dremel name on it as well as the Dremel support. And for the most part, uh, this is pretty comparable to the Muse 2D. So next up in that Kickstarter area is the Make Blocks Laser Box. So this is 40 watts. Uh, it's gonna look pretty comparable to the Full Spectrum and the Glowforge, but really they are kind of marketing this towards education and using this in a school classroom. So you'll kind of see uh, those terms as well as kind of that marketing when you go to their channel, but uh, it seems like a pretty good uh, system. Again, it's just gonna come in at a pretty, pretty high price, even compared to the Glowforge and the Full Spectrum. So one laser company that's actually pretty interesting is called Flux, specifically the Flux BMO, which they call the world's smallest CO2 laser. You guys can see this thing actually is pretty tiny. It's 30 watts, but you can still do about 11 inches by eight inches on the cut side. It's gonna have all the bells and whistles like integrated software, cameras, autofocus, and what's really nice about this is the size and the weight. Uh, so they really build this as a desktop where you can move this around. Just know that the actual workspace of it isn't going to be super great. And actually this is more expensive than again, the Chinese import, that 50 watt, that is still my top budget pick for a CO2. So Flux also has a larger version. They call it the Beam Box Pro. This is actually 50 watts. It is a much larger work area and it is coming under $5,000 with all of the other stuff you would be looking for like autofocus, wireless, good software for the most part and camera system. And it is actually just a bigger version of the Flux Beam Box. So they actually have three different lasers in their line. I don't have much experience with these. I haven't seen a lot of people with them. And the BMO is probably the most interesting of these three, but the Beambox and the Beambox Pro are going to kind of get you in the same range as the Glowforge and the Full Spectrum Muse. Time to wake up. Now, a real interesting company is Embelazer and they are out of Australia. And this is actually a high-end diode laser. Uh, not a high-end diode laser like the power, but the actual gantry and everything around it. Imagine taking uh, the desktop CO2 style of body, but then put a diode laser inside of it. And that's kind of what Emblazer is trying to do. They got a couple different versions. Uh, one is the Emblazer 2, which includes a full enclosure. It's gonna have things like autofocus, 3D cutting and carving, lighting, air assist, all the things you would probably find with a nicer CO2 laser. Um, it's just gonna come in at pretty high price. This is gonna be around 2,500 bucks. But if you want to step it down, they kind of have like a kit version of that as well. They call it the Emblazer Core. It's gonna be a thousand dollars, but you're gonna have a awesome build quality as well as a massive work area. And this one I would kind of compare with the Ortur version two. And you can really see when you step up quite a few hundred dollars more, um, you're really getting the really nice build as well as the safety features that this guy comes with. If I was gonna look at a diode laser and I just wanted to engrave, but I wanted to really manufacture things, I'd actually probably lean towards this. This guy looks pretty interesting. So probably the most interesting design of any of the lasers is to come from Snapmaker. Uh, they actually did a pretty successful Kickstarter back in the day where it was not only a laser, but also a CNC and a 3D printer. You basically have one gantry and then you have three different heads that you can put on it. Uh, because of that, it's gonna be a diode laser because you are taking the actual diode laser component and attaching it. I saw mixed reviews on the first one, but actually they're coming out with a 2.0, uh, which looks really nice. It's just not out yet, uh, but you guys can check out information all over the place if you just look online. So speaking of CNC, actually probably the cheapest way you can get into it and still uh, kind of have a massive work area like most CNC's have compared to lasers is actually to buy just the diode head. Uh, a lot of companies make units that you can pretty much replace the router um, with uh, the laser head. I know JTEC makes a great one. I've seen a lot of people do that with uh, the Inventables X-Carve or the uh, Shape Oco. So that is one option for you guys to kind of get into it, but still work with a system you're already familiar with. But again, most of those heads are still gonna cost you about 200 bucks, which that Ortor version two is going to include the same laser head, but then its own gantry as well. 
And also going back to those Chinese lasers, again, you can pretty much buy the same unit but you just upgrade the wattage. You can go from 50 watts to 60 to 80 to 100 to even like 150. And pretty much it's the same machine. It's just gonna be a bigger tube as well as a bigger work area. And so you can kind of buy what your needs are for. And as you're kind of getting past that 50 watt version, you're probably looking more at this as manufacturing, which kind of leads into one big area I've left out. And that is like the pro level machine. This video is really for if you're a hobbyist and you're wanting to get into this stuff, even though these things are several thousands of dollars, uh, they are a lot cheaper compared to like the top of the line machines that if you're running a business, um, these are gonna be the ones you're probably going to be looking at. These are gonna be from companies like Epilogue, which probably is like the king uh, in the laser world. They have a Zing line, which is kind of targeted towards uh, the lower end market, but they're still real expensive, uh, like nearly $10,000. Then you also have companies like Boss with the LS1416, which is 50 watts, kind of in the same range of these desktop units that we're talking about. They're just a lot bigger. And then Full Spectrum, they make top-end lasers as well. They have a full line called the P-Series. And then the PS20 Pro is gonna come in about the same price as the Muse 2D. It's gonna be a bigger unit and more geared towards folks that really have used lasers before. So one use case that I get asked a ton about is can this engrave metal? Like literally on every video I've done, that's probably one of the top ones. And then a lot of these units come with a rotary unit, meaning that you can put something on it and it's gonna spin it around and then you engrave. And there are a lot of folks that want to laser engrave into metal cups like Yetis. And you can't do that with a diode or a CO2 laser. To really engrave a metal, you've got to jump up into a fiber laser. Full Spectrum actually makes a fiber version kind of in the Muse shell, but that thing is uh, real expensive. And then as you really get into kind of the fiber world, um, you're gonna be talking about well over $10,000, which is pretty crazy. But there is kind of a workaround. And what people will do, either they'll powder coat. So in case of the Yeti, they'll powder coat a color. Then you can use a CO2 laser to actually engrave that powder coating off. So you actually show the metal underneath and you kind of get the effect of engraving onto metal, but you aren't actually marking the metal, you're marking the material on top of that. Now you may not have a powder coater, there are also some sprays that you can get, one's called Ceramark, uh, it's expensive, it's like 100 bucks for a spray can, which is crazy, but you're gonna be able to spray on top of a piece of metal and they're actually going to laser engrave that piece off. These will not be able to cut at all. You have to get into fiber if you want to cut metal. And if you guys get one, let me know because I heard that it looks super cool. With so many lasers out there, there are tons of different dimensions and ways to compare them. Do they have cameras? Do they not? How big is the actual cutting area? How much wattage do I have? What type of laser is it? And during the course of making this video, I actually put all that together in one big table. You can either take a screenshot of this or you can check it out in the full review down below. And speaking of full reviews, we're actually going to jump into the full spectrum muse so kind of my top pick this will be the 3d version and we will check out how it really works you can see a bunch of the cool features so i will see you guys there in a second and until next time go make or break something in your shop see you guys